<laughs> that does bring us to the bestiary. So the first one we're going to go through is the Kepra. So they are described as being fist-sized scarabs with iridescent exoskeletons, black eyes, and being extremely, extremely intelligent. From mythology, the scarab face god is going back to an Egyptian religion and represents the rising or the morning sun and also said to represent the creation and renewal of life, so goes well in hand with the regenerative restorative magic that they have. Their trial of worth, like we mentioned, is to go through the grotto or the underground labyrinth and complete a series of dangerous puzzles. They are tier three and they have a really, really unique reproduction. So it is fable. So there's 112 Kepra that were born. And whenever a Kepra dies, it doesn't truly die. The sands of the body go back to the desert and the creature reforms as a child. So there's a limit to the total number of Kepra that are available to, to bond with at any kind of given time. They don't retain their memories or anything, but it's the same cycle of these 112 Kepra living and dying. They are able to evoke a white hot light, and their manipulation is actually through time. So they're able to manipulate in reverse time, augmentation with time as well, you know, changing kind of the passage of time and how quickly that goes. For passive abilities, you know, they evoke the white hot light. They are able to see through blinding lights and able to see, you know, damage that's been done to the soul. And their aura is the ancient eyesight, which creates a fog in the nearby area, and everybody in that area plays out memory scenes related to that location, so things that would have occurred there years and years ago are playing out in everyone's head. And their true form, they become pure gold, and they glisten regardless of the lighting. Their eyes do become diamonds, and they give the ability to travel back in time twice in total. Um, with the diamonds of their eyes. Shoot. Yeah, that's a some cool some cool magic right there. All right, it's hard to follow up with this one, but our second creature in the beast year today is going to be the thunderbird. These are giant birds of the sky with affinity for lightning. In mythology, the legend comes from particular North American indigenous peoples, history, and culture. It's also considered a supernatural being of power and strength, and it is Zapdos. We don't know the trial of worth for it. And we do know, though, that it is a tier three Pokemon. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't really know anything else about the creature itself. Not its reproduction, evocation, manipulation, augmentation, or passive abilities. Probably evokes some so, sort of lightning as well. Uh, I would guess that the our Arcanist is probably immune to lightning effects for passive abilities. So the aura is the Thunderbird's Thunderclap aura, which causes a thunderstorm whose lightning strikes out of all nearby metal, incapacitating or killing all those in contact. We also don't know what its true form looks like. So again, we're kind of not sure, but hopefully maybe we'll see something more information depending on when the bestiary is released. Hopefully soon after listening to this, but again, we're waiting on the date, so we'll see. Hopefully there'll be some more information on it in there. And with that, we want to thank everybody for listening. And we want to remind, remind everybody that we do post new episodes every Wednesday morning around 11 Eastern, 10 Central, and 8 Pacific Standard Time. We want to thank our editor, Dan Mackison, for all the amazing work that he does for us, including uh, editing and actually putting up pictures and uh, the links to everything in the description section for us. We just want to say thank you so much for listening. The link to the Frith Chronicles wiki is in the description along with the Capital Station Discord. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week.